Qualifying for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is over and Max Verstappen is on pole position. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I am going to be doing a data analysis from qualifying. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying is over then at Saudi Arabia and it is yet again a Red Bull of Max Verstappen on pole position. But how did his lap times change from the start of qualifying to the end of the session? Well, to find out, I've brought up all of the lap times set by Max Verstappen in qualifying from the start to finish. The track conditions improved from the start until the end, but it was not by as much as what you would sometimes see at other circuits, as lap times improved by just one second. Let's now compare the first lap in qualifying to his fastest lap in Q3, and when you look at these two laps, they are fairly identical in a lot of areas around the circuit. At the quick change of direction though, you can see that on his final lap, Verstappen is able to carry more speed as he's able to change direction much faster as the track conditions have improved as well as the confidence of Verstappen. The main area where Verstappen gains time is at the end of the second sector and at the end of the second DRS zone. This then takes him into sector 3 and Verstappen can fire the car into the chicane and it just sticks for him. In this section alone Verstappen gains over 2 tenths and carries that advantage all the way down the straight into the final corner. On the exit of the final corner as well, Verstappen gets great traction and gains the last tenth of a second. This shows how not only the circuit evolved, but also how Verstappen's confidence grew during the session. That was how the times changed during the session, but what can we learn about the top speeds? Well, let's now compare the top speed from each team in qualifying. For this, I've taken the top speed reached during the fastest lap from each team. And what can we learn from this? Well, what we can learn is that the top speed reached in qualifying was the Haas team, like we saw in Bahrain, as Kevin Magnussen was able to reach a top speed of 334 kilometers per hour. It is a shame, really, that we couldn't see what Hulkenberg could do as his power unit failed in the second session. I do think it would have been possible that we saw one Haas in Q3 if Hulkenberg didn't have any issues. The slowest car in a straight line during qualifying was the McLaren car as it only reached a top speed of 325 km per hour. This lack of top speed for me is really hurting the McLaren team and it is costing them valuable time. This lack of speed in a straight line is not just hurting McLaren but it is also hurting Alpine. Alpine were once again having both drivers knocked out in the first part of qualifying and this lack of straight line speed has really hindered the team. Along with them being vastly overweight, they were even further off the pace this weekend than they were in Bahrain. Let's see how far they were from getting to Q2 as we compare the lap time of Esteban Ocon to Alex Albon and we're going to be looking at his Q1 lap times. When we look at these two laps, it's actually pretty interesting. The Alpine, it seems, is really struggling on the brakes and stopping the car when compared to Williams. The Williams also typically gets better exits from corners as they have better traction. This has shown to me the weakness of the Alpine currently. The overweight car is just not as good on the brakes, and the lack of grip on corner exits is showing that the car is not very well balanced, even if they do have good levels of downforce. The team still have a long way to go, with not bringing any updates, including a rear wing. With that, they are going to find this Grand Prix to be a very difficult one. Alpine may have struggled in the midfield, but one team and driver that had a really good day was Yuki Tsunoda in the RB, as he not only managed to make Q3, but he also beat Lance Stroll to P9. Let's compare his Q2 lap to Kevin Magnussen in the Haas to see how Tsunoda managed to make Q3. The top speed of these two laps is fairly similar, but the Haas is just a little bit faster. The RB though gains time by getting better exits and better traction. Not only this, but Magnussen, much like in practice, chooses to brake later and then compromises exits from the corner. This makes him lose time all the way down the straights. In the race tomorrow, it will be interesting to see if RB can be the first midfield team to score any points. With how Saudi Arabia sometimes go, that should be very possible. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. 
Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top five teams starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, today was a fantastic day and it looks like one lap pace of Fernando Alonso was not just a one-off that we saw in practice in order to impress the Aramco sponsors as he is starting this Grand Prix from 4th place, whereas his teammate Lance Stroll is starting the race down in 10th place. But how did Stroll lose so much time compared to Alonso? Well, let's compare both of their laps. When we look at these two lap times, we can see how Stroll progressively loses time when compared to Alonso as the lap continues. Much like with Magnussen, we can see that Stroll tends to break later than Alonso, but he sacrifices corner exits because of this. This compromise once again leads to Stroll losing time all the way down the straights. Also, at the end of Sex 2 here, you can see how Alonso carries a lot more speed going into that chicane, showing his confidence once again. Going into the Grand Prix, Aston Martin might struggle to keep up the pace of the drivers ahead of them as the race pace for Alonso didn't look anywhere near as strong as his one lap pace. But, as usual, Alonso will give absolutely everything in order to try and score a podium result. For McLaren, today was a solid day as both Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri beat both of the Mercedes drivers who are their main rivals at the moment. And it was Piastri who was the top driver in McLaren today. So, let's see how he beat George Russell. As you would expect, Piastri didn't beat Russell in a straight line fight, given the McLaren was a lot slower than the Mercedes. But in the higher speed corners itself, Piastri gets excellent traction and gains a speed advantage all the way down each straight as he can get back to full throttle sooner. This is where McLaren had the advantage last year and they still seem to have that advantage when it comes to high speed downforce when compared to Mercedes. Going into the Grand Prix, McLaren will be looking to move forward and try to beat Alonso as the Aston Martin could be more vulnerable to them in the Grand Prix. When it came to race runs from practice and also in Bahrain, McLaren did have the edge over Aston Martin. The only thing though that could be an issue for them is that lack of straight line speed. This could stall them and stop them from being able to overtake, especially if Alonso can get some sort of tow from Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez. For Mercedes, today was not a great day, as they are starting behind both the McLaren drivers and Alonso. Russell did once again beat Lewis Hamilton, who has had a bit of a tricky start to the season. So, let's now compare the lap of George Russell and compare it to Max Verstappen on pole position. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that Verstappen gains a significant amount of time at the high speed change of direction towards the end of sector one, showing how the Red Bull is just a lot more hooked up than the Mercedes is at the moment, and of course how Verstappen has an incredible amount of confidence. The Red Bull also gets a great amount of traction on the exit of corners, and so gains time all the way down each straight, and also does have a straight line speed advantage. Going into this race, Mercedes is going to have a lot of work to do in order to gain positions. It is possible that they could challenge Piastri if he struggles for race pace, like he sometimes does, and also they could challenge Fernando Alonso if the Aston Martin really does struggle with race pace once again. For Ferrari, they were hindered by Carlos Sainz dropping out due to being ill, but his replacement, Oli Behrman, who stood in, did an incredible job for his first ever Grand Prix. There could not have been any more pressure for an 18-year-old. He didn't make it into Q3, but the grid is so tight that it would have almost been a miracle for him to make it. For his teammate Charles Leclerc, he is lining up in second place against Max Verstappen, and for him in the race, his main goal will be to score a podium result. He's looking very good in this Grand Prix, and if he doesn't have any braking issues, then I don't see why he doesn't score a podium. The pace of the Ferrari is looking very good at the moment. And finally for Red Bull, it is another pole position for Max Verstappen as the Red Bull looks like it is in a league of its own. The race pace of Red Bull looks absolutely incredible, as does the one lap pace it seems. Let's now compare the laps of Verstappen on pole position to Charles Leclerc who is starting in second place. And when you look at these two laps, you can see that in the high speed downforce sections, Verstappen gains a lot of time on Leclerc, and the Red Bull is just faster in a straight line. The Red Bull is just hooked up beautifully around this circuit, which is what you should expect. The flat, smooth surface 
mixed with high speed is where Red Bull are at their strongest and I anticipate that this race will be another walk in the park for Max Verstappen. For his teammate Sergio Perez, things could be a little bit more tricky and he is going to have to fight Charles Leclerc. But I do think it will be very possible that Sergio Perez, when it comes to race trim, will be able to beat Charles Leclerc this weekend. So, with that in mind then, what are my final predictions for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix? Well, the top midfield driver will be Yuki Tsunoda in the RB. But what about the top five? Well, in P5, I am going to go for George Russell in the Mercedes, as I do think he will have better race pace. P4 will be Lando Norris in the McLaren, P3 will be Charles Leclerc, P2 will be Sergio Perez, and yes, I know it's a boring answer now, but I do think Max Verstappen will win the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. But what do you think will happen? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.